Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the previous lecture of ECE 3084 Signals and Systems, we took two functions, namely alpha and beta, and convolved them. And in this lecture, instead of convolving, we're going to compute a cross-correlation. Now, convolution is commutative, so convolving alpha with beta is the same as convolving beta with alpha. But for cross-correlation, the order does indeed matter. So we just need to be careful with that. Now, the way we've defined cross-correlation, it's essentially equivalent to convolving the two functions, except the first function is flipped. Now, I personally find it very convenient, then, to compute this convolution by flipping and shifting alpha, because then if we're flipping and shifting a function that's already flipped from this cross-correlation definition, well, it's pretty much like the convolution we usually do. We just don't bother flipping the function because the two flips cancel each other out. That's the way I like to think about it, although your mileage may vary. And the main reason I wanted to show you this particular example is to show you a trick where we can use an EC2026 style convolution table that we previously used for discrete time convolution in that class to solve this kind of problem quickly, just as we did in the last lecture with the convolution example. And again, this only works because both of these functions are piecewise constant and they stay constant over uniform time intervals. So let me just convolve two discrete time sequences where we just pull the values off of these graphs. Now, because we're doing a cross correlation, I have to remember that I'm convolving with a mirror image of alpha. So instead of writing down the sequence 1 minus 2, 2, I write down the sequence 2 minus 2, 1. And then I want to convolve that with minus 3, minus 1, and 1. All right, so now I need to pick one of these to be a sequence that I'm going to write in the horizontal rows. Well, I'll one by one multiply by these coefficients in each individual row as I scooch the sequence over to the right. So I'll have minus 3, minus 1, 1 times 2. That's doubling everything. So I have minus 6, minus 2, 2. The next line is doubling just with the minus sign. So I can write this down again just with the signs flip. So I'll write 6 to minus 2. And in the last row here, scooching over one more, it's all this stuff times 1. So that's just minus 3, minus 1, 1. And now if I add along the columns, I'll have minus 6. I'll have 4. Let's see, this 4 minus 3 is 1. This is minus 3. And here I'll have 1. So as a sanity check, let's redo that where we'll take this sequence here, the 2 minus 2, 1, and make that be the sequence that we write along the rows while multiplying by these coefficients one by one as we go down the table. Let's see. So we're multiplying everything here by minus 3. So I'll have minus 6, 6, and then minus 3. For the next row, multiplying by minus 1, so that's just flipping the signs on the sequence. So I'll have minus 2, 2, minus 1. And then I'll multiply everything by 1, so that's just the sequence. So I've got 2, minus 2, 1. And adding up the columns, I'll have minus 6, 4, 1, minus 3, and 1. So I can take these numbers and plot them up here. So we're going to start at 0 and go down to minus 6. And then we go up to 4, trying to do this vaguely to scale. And then we have 1, minus 3, 1, and then going back to 0. And remember, as we're sliding functions around and everything is a constant and we're integrating constants, when you integrate a constant, you get a ramp. So we can just connect these with straight lines. Not a work of art, but hopefully you get the idea. So now that we've done it the easy way, let's try it the brute force difficult way. So we'll think about the beta here as a function where I'll plug tau in for t. So we'll leave that fixed. And what I'll do is I'll take this function and this is the function that in the convolution we're going to flip and shift. But because we're doing a cross-correlation, 
we flip it before we do the convolution. So those two flips cancel. And so basically I'm sliding along an unflipped version of this function. Now this doesn't line up terribly well. I made some of these chips on the beta function wider when I drew them than when I drew the alpha. Those should be the same size, but I think this will be close enough to give us a sense of what's going on. So now we'll think about this alpha function here as being alpha tau minus t instead of t minus tau like in a convolution. And in order for me to slide this along and have it still be meaningful, let me erase these numbers on the axes. I want to think about zero as being stayed fixed here, one is here, two is here, three is here, and so on, minus one as I slide this around. If I think about this is now a tau axis, as I multiply these functions together, I'll wind up with one times minus three, which will give me minus three between zero and one. Again, this is a tau axis that we're drawing here. And then I'll have minus one times minus two. So that's going to be two. All right, and now I've got one times two, which gives me two. And integrating over this function, I'll have two plus two minus three, so that's four minus three, which gives us the one that we computed earlier. So let me pick up my alpha function and squish it one time unit to the right. So we can think about this as for t equal one. So here we'll have minus one times one, which gives me minus one. Then I'll have one times minus two, which gives me a minus two. So when I integrate this whole mess, I have minus one, minus two, add that up, gives me a minus three. So that's what I expect. All right, so scooching it over one more time unit, I'll have, I only have one chip that's overlapping. One times one, that's just one. That's not very interesting. That gives me the one there at t equal two. And then if I were to move this over one more, I wouldn't have any overlap and we see that it goes to zero. All right, so what about going the other direction? We started at t equals zero, which was here, and then we moved it to the right by one and two time units. Let's move it a time unit to the left. And this is a little less obvious in terms of what's going on because I did not draw this very well. I sort of drew this wider and this narrower. Anyway, this one gets multiplied by zero. The negative three gets multiplied by the negative two, which gives us six. And then I'll have negative one times two, which gives us minus two. And then when I integrate this, I wind up with four, six minus two. So that makes sense. And now for the grand finale, let's scoosh this over another time unit. And the way to think about this, I think, would be to say that we're going to subtract minus two instead of writing tau plus two. I think writing tau minus minus two is sort of the best way to think about it because it emphasizes we're moving this to the left. And here I'll have minus three times two, which is minus six, integrating that gives us this minus six up here. And of course, if I were to move this one more unit to the left, I wouldn't have any overlap at all. So this probably wasn't a great example because I didn't draw this very well, but you get the general idea. Now, I didn't necessarily have to draw out the function in detail down here over that tau axis that we are integrating for every single step. Once you see what's going on, you can start to do a lot of this in your head. But I still contend that for these particular kind of functions, just doing this 2026 style discrete time convolution table winds up being faster. Now, if you have time, you should always try working a problem several different ways to see if you ultimately get the same answer. So we went to a bunch of work to try to figure out what our alpha beta was. Well, what if I was really interested in our beta alpha? Well, if you already have computed our alpha beta, this isn't very difficult. If we think about what this is in terms of convolution, it's defined as beta minus t convolved with alpha of t. And remember, our alpha beta of t was defined as alpha minus t convolved with beta t. 
So remembering that convolution is commutative, we see that if I were to just negate all the t's in here, I would get the same thing. So r beta alpha is equal to r alpha beta minus t. So r beta alpha would just be this function mirror flipped around zero.